In this video, I'm going to explain to you the k-means clustering algorithm. In the uh, uh, last two videos, we explained what clustering is, and we uh, covered hierarchical clustering. We covered the two methods, the, the, two, the two methods, the agglomerative and the divisive methods, and now we start partitive clustering, in particular the k-means clustering algorithm. Now, the k-means clustering, what it does, it tries to partition n objects or, or n points into k clusters in which each object belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean. We'll be using near the mean or the centroid in our context. They are sort of the same thing. You can think of the mean, uh, the, the centroid as some sort of a weighted mean. Uh, this method produces exactly k different clusters of greatest possible distinction. So we have n points or n objects and we partition them into k clusters. Each object belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean and the method produces exactly k different clusters of greatest possible distinction. The problem now is that we need to specify the number k or the number of clusters in advance. The best number of clusters k leading to the, to the greatest separation or the greatest distance is not known as a priori and must be computed from the data. So we either compute that from the data and or uh, uh, specify the number k in advance, i.e. the number of clusters. Now the objective of k-means clustering is to minimize total intra-cluster variance or the squared error function. We need to minimize the squared error function. So the objective function j is the summation over the number of clusters and the number of cases or the number of points and when we find the um, squared differences for each case x of i which is the point uh, in our data and c of j there is the centroid of cluster j so for each point i the distance to the cluster centroid of cluster j cj is the centroid of cluster j and that's our distance function we square the difference and we sum over all the points and all the uh, clusters. We'll have an example for things to make sense. But the algorithm, the way the algorithm works is that we're trying to cluster the data into k groups where k is predefined, so we, we provide k in advance. What we do is we select k points at random as cluster centers. After that, we assign objects to their closest cluster center according to the Euclidean distance function. After that, we calculate the centroid or the mean of all objects in each cluster. We keep repeating points 2, 3, and 4 until the data, the data does not change any more. As I mentioned, we'll have an example for things to make sense, but just look at points uh, 2, 3, and 4. Select k points at random, so we select randomly k points, and then we assign objects to their closest cluster center according to the Euclidean distance. After that, we calculate the centroid or mean for all objects in each cluster and we keep repeating until the data stops changing. Now, the k-means clustering algorithm is a relatively efficient method, but we need to specify the number of clusters in advance and the final results, results are sensitive to initialization and often terminate at a local optimum. So the, uh, 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 the random choice of k in the in, in second in step two here is essential in uh, uh, getting good or not good results unfortunately there's no global theoretical method to find the optimum the optimal number of clusters k that's why we have to specify it in advance uh, a practical approach though is to compare the outcomes of multiple runs with different k values and choose the best one based on a predefined criterion. So we can uh, run the algorithm several times and then choose the best one. In general, a large k probably decreases the error but increases the risk of overfitting. I hope that makes sense. It's quite easy uh, to understand, easy to implement even. I'll try to provide some Java code uh, if I, I, I have the time to do that. But let's have an example for things to make sense. Now let's assume that we want to group the visitors to a website using their age. Uh, you know, that's a one-dimensional space, sort of. So let's say we collect the uh, 
uh, uh, age of each individual who visits the website within a certain period of time. Let's say the first visitor uh, is uh, age 15, 15, the second is 15, third is 16, and so on and so forth, 19, 20, and so on and so forth. Now, we begin the algorithm. We need to specify k, and let's say we specify k as 2. Now, we want to cluster them into two clusters or two groups. Step number two, if you remember, um, we randomly choose. Uh, let's go back to the algorithm. We randomly choose k points, so we randomly choose two points. Let's say we choose 16 and 22 randomly from the data. And then in the first iteration, what we do now, we find the closest points to each, closest points from the data to each of these two points. So for example, 15 is much closer to 16 than it is close to 22. That's why 15 joins the cluster of 16. And point 40 is much closer to 22 rather than 16. That's why it joins the cluster of 22 and so on and so forth. So we do that. We choose the closest points now in the, in the first iteration. After that, when we create the clusters, the two clusters, we compute the centroid again now. Or we compute the, um, the uh, centroid or the mean for the two clusters. By the way, when we choose k in the beginning, that uh, we choose two, two k, uh, I'm sorry, we choose k values at random the mean is considered to be that value in the beginning. After that, we choose the, we f find the closest points to each point, we add them to each cluster accordingly, and then we find the mean of the first cluster and the mean of the second cluster, and then we repeat, we go over the points again and see how far they are from the new means or the new centroids, and add them accordingly, ac accordingly to each cluster. I hope that makes sense, and notice now, iteration 3, iteration 4, things stop to change, so the two clusters, or the points in the two clusters stop changing, that's when we terminate, and now we have two clusters. So, uh, no change between iteration 3 and iteration 4. By using clustering, we have managed to create two groups uh, of, of visitors according to their age. The initial choice, I just repeat this, the initial choice of centroids can affect the output clusters. So the algorithm is often run multiple times with different starting conditions in order to get a fair view of what the clusters should be. What that means is uh, randomly here which shows, for example, 16 and 22 at the beginning, uh, remember k is 2, we can run it again maybe and we start with maybe 19 and 44, run it the third time, maybe start with uh, uh, 15 and 43 and so on and so forth to get a fair view of what the clusters uh, should be. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I will try to provide Java implementation of this, although I trust that you can implement it yourself. What you can do is you can go back to my YouTube channel, find my videos on the K-Means classifier. In there, I actually um, I provide a detailed Java implementation. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.